doping in all fields of sport is not only illegal, but the act itself is seen as the most shameful thing an athlete can do. Whether it be in track and field, swimming, weightlifting, cycling, or tennis, taking performance enhancing substances puts yourself at an unfair advantage, which is clearly unjust. So, the countless hours of training, the blood, sweat, and tears each moral athletes endure to further their careers is legitimately deemed counterproductive. In terms of tennis, it is a sport that has kept an immaculate image thanks to its lack of drug scandals, for the most part, but we'll get to more about that later. Because of this immaculate image, annual revenue sponsorship is estimated to be around $250 million and broad cut rights capital is around $1 billion. So of course the ATP chairman and president, Chris Como, says tennis is in the best place it's ever been. Sponsors view it as a premier sports product, as a sort of high-end sports product. People see it as a clean sport. However, is this clean image that tennis upholds mostly due to the feeble anti-doping efforts by the Tennis Federation? Anti-doping pioneer Dr. Donald Catlin says that tennis has not done enough in their anti-doping practices and suggests that their testing is minimal. For years, the anti-doping formalities relied on basic screening labs provided by the WADA labs. Incompetent of detecting cutting-edge EPOs, human growth hormones, or synthetic testosterones, and cases of microdosing. It follows the same testing protocols as less profitable sports such as kayaking, handball, and canoeing. Therefore, the majority of tennis players who are caught in for drug violations have been for recreational purposes instead of for performance enhancing purposes. In 1997, Andre Agassi tested positive for methamphetamines during a routine drug test. Frenchman Richard Gasquet, Swiss legend Martina Hingis, and Britons Dan Evans tested positive for cocaine during a routine drug test. However, all of them were welcomed back to tennis with moderate reaction to mostly open arms and have achieved great success since their returns. So, is tennis doing enough to stamp out on genuine drug cheats? In a survey conducted by ESPN on 31 professional tennis players, 65% of participants claim the periodic drug testing isn't sufficient enough to catch offenders and claim they personally know a player who have used performance enhancing drugs. One of the rare moments where the ITF actually caught a player using a substance that was a highly beneficial PED was America's Wayne Odesnik, who imported human growth hormones into Australia during the Brisbane International Tournament in January 2010. On May 2010, the ITF decided to take away Odesnik's 2010 prize money earnings of $90,000, ranking points, and banned him for two years, which was eventually reduced to one year for cooperating with the investigation and pleading guilty. However, he was banned yet again in January 2015 after testing positive to banned substances, including steroids. This time, he was banned for 15 years. When Maria Sharapova tested positive for melodonium, it made headlines all over the world. Not particularly because she was taking the most strongest PED, more so because she's just Maria Sharapova, the highest paid female athlete, now shameless drug cheat. Melodonium is actually available in Russia and the Baltic countries and is legally used to treat ischemia and other heart conditions. Sharapova herself claimed she was taking melodonium strictly for health issues relating to magnesium deficiency and a family history of diabetes. Nonetheless, the anti-doping tribunal concluded, as well as many of the tennis world, believed that Sharapova was taking melodonium to increase her performance rather than for legitimate medical reasons. Thus, she received a two-year ban, later reduced to 14 months. Here's a side note about Maldonium because the tennis world's reception towards Sharapova's revelation was very polarizing. 
melodonium is actually not approved by the FDA in the USA. But as mentioned before, it is available in the Baltic countries and Russia, and the World Anti-Doping Agency added it to the banned drug list in September of 2015. The World Anti-Doping Agency realized many athletes abuse the use of meldonium with the intention of enhancing performance due to its ability to increase blood flow, increase exercise capacity, and stamina. A 2015 study found that up to 20% of Russian athletes' tests were found to have meldonium in their system. So you can be the judge whether the 5-time Grand Slam winner was genuinely using meldonium for health purposes or not. Many tennis players believe that some are playing the system and are seeking ways to exploit the loopholes in the drug tests. Other than Wayne or Desny, only 4 other players have tested positive for PEDs that highly benefits them athletically, and they happen to be junior ITF players. Some doping experts believe tennis is close to the same high risk level for PEDs as football, baseball, cycling, and track and field, yet it lacks the methods and facilitation to be able to catch them. Outspoken players like Roger Federer and Andy Murray have advocated for better quality testing. 